Welcome to another week of Barefoot Travels. And welcome to Great Harbour Key. I am a barefoot man, barefoot to make my stand. I bear my souls for all the world to see. Yeah. I am a barefoot man, be better firmly in the sand. Bear your souls, come along with me. So we arrived here yesterday after a 13 and a half hour crossing. First part of the crossing was pretty, pretty standard and pretty, it was flat, calm, beautiful. Yeah, there wasn't any seas to talk of at all. We didn't film anything because it was just nothing there. Just flat. It was just flat. Yeah, towards the end though, we did have a couple of little, it got a little bit sloppy, didn't it? The wind picked up from some weird angle. So crossing over from where we came from, from Cat Island, from Cat Key to Great Harbour, it's crossing what's known as the Banks. So crossing the Banks can be a little bit interesting. Um, it's one. It's a slightly bigger hop. It's going across the Banks, and really you don't want the wind to be too strong out of the east, and that's the prevailing, obviously, easterly winds, because yeah. um, it can get a bit sloppy. And we have crossed it once before in the old boat, and I think that was one of Erica's most favourite so, nights on the vessel. I don't know if you guys remember or have watched us when we were on our Catalina 36 back in the day, but we did cross the banks and we decided to anchor across. So we were traveling with three, two other boats. So there's three of us total. And we had left Bimini. We had made our way across. We were with Folly and I can't remember the name of the other boat, but the other boat, they just disappeared. They just were no longer there and they weren't answering the radio or nothing. So us and Folly, we decided to anchor on yeah, the banks. Yeah, we just pulled off, basically pull off the magenta line. It's not like you pull up to a nice beautiful anchorage on no. an island. There isn't anything there. Okay, so this area just over here, according to the charts, is called Mackie Bank. Um, it's very, very similar to this area just over here, or this area just here, or the area in front of us, because it's all exactly the same. There's no land. It's all about the same thing. You just feel like you're in the middle of nowhere in about 15 feet of water. It was relatively calm when we did that um, and we decided we would wait for our buddy boats because that's kind of the nice respectful thing to do. Maybe they had trouble and maybe they were just slow or whatever. So we decided to wait, see if we could get them on the radio. We kept trying. Anyway, long story short, we did changed. find those people again after about a week. Yeah. Um, but the wind changed in the night. And they went into a marina or something and they <laughs> didn't bother to tell us. Anyways. We ended up anchoring on the banks and it got so rough and like literally I was the windless on that old boat and trying to pull up the chain it was a bloody nightmare. Yeah. It was just So yeah, we got ridiculous. tossed around all night long, woke up super early with the sunrise and got the hell out of Dodge. So that was interesting. So this time crossing the banks was definitely much better. It was flat, calm, we did it in one run, it was about 13 hours. We left super um, early and had the plan to go the whole way, so we just yeah. did a 13 hour run. Because that cat key, it was beautiful, but it is a private island, so we didn't really want to hang out there because we. Yeah, they don't take don't allow dog. us to go to the beach. Yeah, you can't so. take dog for a run or anything else. So we decided 13 hour run all the way to Great, Great Harbour, Harbour key, key, which gets us here. Um, so Great Harbour Key, as um, I'll show you now, uh, our friend Brian was super happy for us to get here. Um, so he filmed us a little bit coming in. We arrived just at sunset. We were exhausted. It was a long day. Um, but Great Harbour Key is kind of like a nice little hurricane hole. So with Brian, you might have noticed we've got a new little song in our intro and the Barefoot Man. Um, if you like that, give a big thumbs up. We'll leave a little link to Brian as well in, um, in the description or in the comments. And um, so he's the one that's filmed that to us. as a little bit of a thank you for, what did we do for Brian? We or what did new... Brian do wrong and we helped him out? <laughs> Brian lost his dinghy. He was only in the Bahamas for about... About a month, right? He was about month? a month ahead of us. Yeah, and he lost his dinghy. Um, so we were still in the States making our way down the coast. He managed to order one from one of the cheap ones from West Marine, got it delivered to us in Palm Beach Palm from friends, Beach. and we were able to bring it across from the States to the Bahamas to Great Harbor Key. Where so we've had, we've had the dinghy strapped to the side of the trampoline for the last, what, two, three weeks? Yeah. yeah so he's but super happy now. Brian was in Eleuthera, I think, when he lost his dinghy. Um, are we going to explain the golden rule? The golden rule is always put two lines on. Two painters on a dinghy. If it's staying in the water, always two lines. Lift it or lose it. Yeah, or say, lift it, it or lose it, which is a good one. So that's what we tend to do. We tend to bring ours up on the on the devits every night. Uh, but even in the daytime, if we're in an anchorage, always two lines clipped on. Uh, but anyway, Brian says so, that this was a one-off. 
well, so Brian ended up losing his dinghy. Um, and the thing that really kind of was demoralizing, I guess, for Brian, um, is his dinghy was seen by like three oh, different people. Like cruisers, just, fishermen, they even took pictures of it, pulled yeah. up alongside it while it was floating around out at sea. In the middle of the... In the, calm yeah. conditions as well. It wasn't like it was difficult. They pulled up next to him and went, oh, there's a dinghy, there's no one in it. And they just, they posted it on Facebook on pictures of it and just left it there. No one towed it into a safe harbour or anything at all. So by so, the time Brian actually found, got the photos, it was too late. The dinghy would have drifted even further and it was just like a blind chase. Um, so anyway, that dinghy has gone. It was never recovered in the end. There was rumours of where it had been spotted, and it was apparently spotted on land somewhere anyway, but we're not going down that rabbit hole. That dinghy is gone. Yeah. So, but anyway. if you are out cruising, if you are a cruiser and you do see a dinghy floating out at sea, pick it up and take it somewhere. Normally courtesy to bring it in, as long as you're not putting your own vessel in any danger and, you know, the weather's yeah. calm and stuff. Obviously, you're not going to put yourself at any risk or your crew at risk for doing it. So you don't have to take yourself out of way. Just take yeah. it wherever you're going, post on the many different Facebook groups, and someone you're... will be thankful that at least it's And you'll safe. normally get a very big tip. Again. So it's so nice being back in the Bahamas. We're just getting ready to go and explore a new to us area. We're here yeah. in the Berry Islands. We've been to the Berries before, but just the southern end and literally just for a couple of days and we never really got to explore the, the good spots. So. so we're about to blow the dinghy up with a lot of crap. Yeah. <laughs> That's not I, even all of it. Um, so we're taking our electric scooters with us. The metal detector. And we're gonna go and explore. Do you wanna go to the beach? Fuck so. Go to the beach? You wanna to go to the beach? The beach? She's like, I don't know if there's cherries. I can't tell if there's cherries. Should here. we go to the beach? The beach! <laughs> okay, we go to the beach. We can play ball. What's this? There's a new one. It's gonna go drop in a minute. <laughs> Look at that, we fit nicely. That's actually not too bad. It's the first time having the scooters in this dinghy, eh? Yeah. The new little foot. Man says, I'm sorry, son, but where's your shoes? I say, ain't got none. If you want to come inside of here, you just better go and find yourself some. I said, man, whatever you're selling, I surely don't want none. If it means I gotta hide my toes from the lovely, 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 lovely sun. I am a barefoot man, barefoot to make my stand. I bear my you soul want to go on for all the world to see. Yeah, I, so. I am a barefoot man, you bled it firmly in the sand. Bear your feet, set your souls free. People sometimes stare when they pass, they say, so aren't you a little bit wood by glass? I said, man, that's the last thing on my mind. But thank you for asking. So I am a barefoot man, barefoot to make my stand. I bear my souls for all the world to see. Yeah, yeah. I am a barefoot man, he planted firmly in the sand. <laughs> be your feet, oh, set your yeah. souls free. Can't deny as the years gone by, seen my share of splinters. That's the price you pay, cause I said, shoes off for winter. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't every child wish it last? You know the summertime feeling on a barefoot in the grass. But all them days go by so fast And then you're thinking about the past I am a barefoot man Barefoot to make my stand I bear my souls for all the world to see yeah, yeah. I am a barefoot man He planted firmly in the sand Bear your souls Come along with me
Lose your shoes, lose your blues, come along, come along with me. So it's times like these when we're back on the beach that you really think about all the hard work that you've put into your project over time and it makes it so worthwhile. Our time on the hard... Thanks, Fox. <laughs> Our time on the hard was challenging. It was difficult. It felt like it took longer than it probably should have or could have. Um, but being back here on the beach, in our happy place, it makes it all worthwhile. And it makes it so satisfying. It's, it's just hard to put words onto it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed how far we've come with our transition on Barefoot and are looking forward to some more videos of traveling around the beautiful Bahamas. Welcome to the Bahamas! And Fox doesn't collect the ball if she if someone throws it to me, because she knows I'll get it. What's this, Wiggle Boy? What's this here? Is that the famous pink ball? Ready? Okay, so we do want to say a massive thank you to Brian for letting us use his song. So it is an original song that Brian wrote many years ago. Um, so Brian has been barefoot pretty much as long as Davey has been. Um, he is from a place near where I'm from, up in Canada. Um, he lived in Grand Bend for a long time and used to play at all the different bars and restaurants up there and he would always go around town barefoot. So he sails a Hughes 38. He came all the way down from Canada, from the Great Lakes, down the east coast of the states to the Bahamas now. So if you want to follow his channel, it's called Journey of Farfalla. If you are interested to hear some of his other music, uh, he is on Spotify, I believe, um, Brian Dale. Uh, so feel free to check him out. He's pretty talented. He knows so many different songs and I'm sure we'll show more of his talent in some of our upcoming videos. We're planning on traveling with him for the foreseeable future. Um, so get ready to hear Barefoot Man often on our channel. We're super pleased that he let us use this song. So thank you, Brian. I am a barefoot man, barefoot to make my stand. I bear my soul for all the world to see. Yeah, yeah. I am a barefoot man. You plant it firmly in the sand. Bear your feet, set your souls. 